my time of laying around and doing nothing is over. I think when it comes to this meal, it's definitely something that I've always had growing up. It's the staple, like when my dad was too lazy to cook, he'd always have like the chicken on the stove, the rice already ready to go. Like it was this go-to feed the kids before too late meal. It's basically chicken, sauce bar, and rice. But I know there's a special word for that and he'll correct me later. Poulon sauce, du riz blanc, a sauce poire rouge. Mm -hmm. That's you know me. what? You guys didn't teach me Creole, so it's all hard. <laughs> Around this time, I would actually be on a family trip, hanging out with them, feeling my Haitian culture, and because of quarantine, you know, I can't. So I have been feeling like I miss my family. I'm going to be very biased when I say that my dad's recipe is better than a lot of other people's recipes. He is my top chef. Your top chef may be somebody else, but my dad is my top chef. I keep part of my culture, mix with the United States ways. Improvise. Improvise and alter mm -hmm. anything you want. That's why I call my restaurant Fusion. Before we cook anything, the first thing we have to do is make our marinade, per se. I would say that's how American people call it. My family calls it ipas. It's basically our go-to seasoning for everything. It's like celery, green peppers, a crap ton of garlic, some shallots, some scallions, lemon juice, and a little bit of chicken bouillon, and that's it. So we got our mason jar here, <laughs> and it has our uh, seasoning base. So we're just gonna put this top, reduce, reuse, and recycle on these hoes. I'm gonna put them in the fridge so I can use it later for the chicken. While we start the chicken, we're gonna soak the red beans. So now I'm going to wash this bowl and then we're going to clean the chicken with lemon and vinegar. Haiti, majority of the population, we don't have full-time electricity. So when the people go buy the meat at the market, it's usually sitting on a table full of flies. Mm. So when you get home, you gotta boil the water and hope you could take all the bacteria off the meat over here. So when you buy the meat, all you gotta do is put it in vinegar water and rinse it. That will eliminate majority of the germs. I saw something on TikTok. It's like about people don't clean their chicken. Can't relate. Of course, wash your hands before and after dealing with chicken. Now I'm going to season the chicken. So this is my favorite part as a kid. I have the gift. That's why I had seasoning duties and my little sister had the cutting duties and then my older sister had the cooking duties. And it was, we were sea chefs for our dad. We don't like no pale chicken in this little Jean household. Our chicken gotta be as brown as us. It smells very earthy, very delicious. I'm putting some of the seasoning base that we made earlier onto the chicken. Give it that earthly taste, you know what I'm saying? We make sure it's doused in sauce. So the criminal Rizzy Stones. You know what? I'm feeling more confident. Only because everything smells good. I think my house smelled a little bit more of raw meat. <sighs> my time of laying around and doing nothing is over. I'm tired of cutting. I'm sauteing it, okay? Tired! I will properly learn how to cut stuff. <laughs> So I finally cooked the chicken. I'm gonna check it every 10 minutes, flip it around, make sure it gets brown, and then I'm gonna boil it. So the red beans, a little bit of blue sheen flair, we added coconut and smoked turkey neck. Now we're just gonna let it cook, then I'll strain it, and then I'll just have it on a low boil. It's a little more nerve wracking because like, you know when you cook the things and like you can do it perfectly, but now that you're by yourself, it's like, is this even right? All right, so the beans are finally ready. So we're gonna blend about half of the beans and then we are going to put it back in the sauce, give it some seasoning and then another 20 minutes. And then the sauce squad is done, baby. I'm definitely channeling my mom because she is the rice queen. She makes the best rice in the freaking world. Mom, was I supposed to, was I supposed to let the, the water boil and then I put the rice in? You could do it either way. Can I use uh, olive oil? Make sure that the meat is cooked. This ain't good, y'all. Goodbye, chicken. I'm broiling you. Wifey mode. Hey, babe, how was your day? I mean, Haitian food. Every time I cook something Haitian, it reminds me of my parents, and it reminds me of the love 
that they've instilled in me for my culture, for who I am, how I was raised as a Haitian person in this country. But the main thing is Haitian food tastes good. Phenomenal. And you're doing a great job trying to explore it and showing it to the world. And I'd be proud of you putting it out there. <laughs> Love you. Damn. It's just making me feel like I'm back home. Let's try it. This definitely tastes very similar to my dad's chicken, for sure. It feels orgasmic. After spending four hours in the kitchen, cooking, tasting your food, and eating it with your best thing. I think now I feel inspired to cook more Haitian food and annoy my parents more for recipes.